What is good, Vancouver? What is good to our whole hood, our whole neighborhood, all our beautiful supporters and our individuals? We are here today for our uh, episode seven of In The Cut. It's our season finale. Uh, my name is Rain Cruz. This is Jay. And we're here with Spencer and yo. Colin from THC and Dank Mario. What's going good on, boys? man? Hood Hello, legends yo. right here, yo. Hell yeah, bro. How, How are you, bro? Man. Super blessed, man. Yeah. Super blessed, man. How's summer I've feeling been. so far for like the whole squad and the team over there? We know you guys are hustling hard, bro, over there. It's feeling good, man. Should be a legendary summer, you know? We uh, we had a really hard summer last summer, you know? For sure. Probably the, you know, the worst summer of all time. Facts. But, you know, we're looking to bounce back heavy this year. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Pop off with the store in Robson um, in a few weeks, you know? So we're going to be busy this summer down in Robson. Trying to get things <laughs> cracking, you know what I'm saying? Right, moving out the hood for mm-hmm. a second, you know? Hell yeah, bro. Um, before we continue, if you guys aren't familiar with who they are, Spence, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves real quick, just what you guys do. Yo, so well. yeah, I'm Spence, aka Snack Bundles. Snack Bundles. You know, I, uh, I run Dank Mart and THC, two of the most legendary stores in the city, at the compound just up the street here, 49th yes, and Main. Yeah, man, just doing things, just trying to keep that going, keep elevating. Keep it legendary, you know? Yes, sir. And I got my man here. So this was just supposed to be me, but, you know, I got my man here, Colin, campaign, they call him. And he's, uh, I'm, he's uh, learning to take THC over, you know? Oh, shit. So he's he's going to be the future of THC. Future of THC. So I thought it was only right to bring him out here today. Okay. You know what I'm sure, welcome, man. welcome. Oh, yeah, you guys man. know I show love for the app. Yeah, so yeah, straight oh, up, shit. yeah. 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 Yo, zoom into yeah. that, though. Zoom into that shit. <laughs> The way that the THC change just bangs off the yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yo, the crazy thing about him, man, he uh, he moved across the country. He took a pay cut at first, but still because, uh, you know, I, I, we never worked together. So he moved across the country and we didn't, without even any guarantee of a job or anything. And he didn't even have a place to live. Wow. So he just came here like, you know, he's been asking us for years, talking to bro, everyone like, yo, trying to work with THC. It was like three, four years he was asking, I would say, you know, so Damn, bro. he came and he's making a huge difference at THC's doing all the marketing and everything, you know, That's so dope, bro. hell yeah. How man. did you like, even being from Toronto, how did you even get a, like, catch wind of THC and what's going on out here? I've been in the cannabis industry for a while, bro, and these guys were like the only ones making waves Word. back in the day, man. Like they, they had like tens of thousands of followers back in the day on Instagram. This Hell was yeah. years ago, bro, and no one had that kind of yeah. kind of thing. I used to work at Weed Maps, which is like an app that listed all the dispensaries. So, yeah. I mean, they were like number one for, for a long time. I always wanted to work with them. I always kind of believed in their mission and what they had here was just like super unique. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I've been, you know, trying to work with them for time. It just like was the right time to- It was the right here. time, you know? Yeah. It's been about nine months now. It's all about timing with everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's it's two other guys at the compound who are asking me, for a job for like seven years, Manny and right. Keegan, you know? Right, right, now right. they're both once yeah. holding down the warehouse, once right. holding down the store, so it's just crazy. You That's know? dope. So you guys have like years before, like years of just history of like persistency, and you can tell. That's what being, you know, persistent, that's what it'll get right. you, you know? Exactly, yeah. How did, what, what made you like keep asking even after years and years and years of like? Bro, I mean, just like, you know, I, first of all, I seen these guys go through so much. Like right. I seen Spencer just even personally go through so much that I knew that you know the challenges they they had to close and reopen so many times that you know if they could go through those challenges, nothing was gonna stop them. And I just wanted mm. to be a part of an unstoppable mm. team. Bro, totally. a lot of these other companies in the cannabis industry uh, are going out of business and stuff like that. Exactly. And I just believe THC. You know, it's it's a it's a long term thing. I think that's the thing that's like like the non tangible thing that really speaks volumes is like someone's grind, someone's real like dedication to their craft. Like, I think that shit can say more than whatever your own mouth can say. Totally. Yeah. And, like, the support from your own community. Because if you guys could close down them that many times and bounce back up, you know what I mean? It just shows that your community went strong for you because you go hard for them, too. I've seen it, like, in the barber industry where shops open up, they'll close, like, a year later because there's no, like, full community around no, it. So sure. it's so important. I've always said it. I, I did a post the other day, you know, like, since I came in there, it's been almost a decade since day one. I put my focus on culture and community. You know what I'm saying? And I put money after that. You know, and I was just like, yo, if we can really change the cult, do legendary things for the culture and build a huge community, the money is gonna come. Instead of just focusing on money, so money, money. Exactly. You know? I'm like, yo, how can I build the biggest community out here? That's and nice now today, too. man, it's like, you know, I, I definitely say it's one of the biggest communities in Vancouver, you know? So definitely, super yeah, blessed yeah. for that. You know, it's one of the 
most things I'm most grateful for, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a tip for all people out there, you know. Can't always put money first when you Fact. when you just work uh, focus on being the best that you can be. Totally, the money will come. The money will you come. Know? Yeah. Most of the time, when you don't, when you do put money first, that shit don't come. Yeah, because no, people sure. think like the money saves you from all the problems, but bro, when you get that money, there's more problems that come no along money, with no it. Problems. So it's like, yo, just enjoy this process that you're learning, and whatever your situation that you're in currently now, you're meant to go through that in a sense where the universe knows, in a sense, no, what you're sure. meant to be. If you're you passionate know? about something and you go hard every day just because you're passionate about that and you want to be the best at that exactly the money will come because eventually you're going to be the best at it yeah and eventually you're going to be able to People get paid for it yeah you know what i'm saying like, exactly you know we started with uh, fucking a half p and you know just <laughs> look where it took us you know yeah. what i'm saying Yo, so, for real let's take it back to Rich. like was was it always the vision like where did the idea of like you know thc and mm -hmm. even dankmar now like where did those come from well thc it came from uh you know, like I, my bro, <coughs> long list Nike Chan, my brother, yes, sir. Sir. you know, I told him like 12 years ago, I had a dream to be the weed king in the city one day, you <laughs> know, and uh, you know, there's videos of him talking about that moment. Yeah. And, you know, I told him that's what I want to do. And, you know, the reason why I wanted to is because like weed stores had just started popping off at the time. Like uh, there was maybe only like two to four at the time, you know what I'm saying? But like, Everyone, I I was like such just a fan of weed, you know what I mean? Like, like the definition of a weed head, you know? Like I was just in love mm -hmm. with everything about it, you know? Mm -hmm. I wasn't even a connoisseur yet at that time. Oh, oh shit, you, know you just loved saying? it. I just loved it, you know? I, I became a connoisseur yeah, over yeah, time, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. just like going to all these stores in, in the hood and like around here, every time I left, I was just like, man, you know, I think that store wasn't the nicest store or, you know, they didn't have the best stuff or, their customer service wasn't that dank and so every time being such a fan of weed just leaving these stores i'm like man vancouver needs something that's like a legendary cannabis store like mm -hmm. how can the best weed city in the world not have like w at least one legendary Fact. cannabis store you know so i just seen a lane and um you just took it. we just we just went hard for it you know yeah, yeah. and dankmar dankmar came to be because you know i used to live on top of a bodega in new york you know what i'm saying so I always just, you know, when I came back, that was just always in my mind, like, you know, maybe one day having a store like that. And Snacky, Snacky used to have a bong shop at Aberdeen <laughs> back in the day, what? like straight up. He had his own bong shop there. <laughs> That's like, crazy. Back in the day. Inside like, the a lot mall? of people don't know that, yeah. Inside, inside, the, inside the mall. The mall. So when we linked up, you know, we both had experience of like, you know. Running the store type shit. Like, even though I wasn't fucking working at the bodega, I was there every day, you Work. know, buying everything my food, my white tees, my DVDs, everything, you know? Mm -hmm, so yeah. I was really inspired by it. And Snacky, you know, he had the bong shop. So we we're always just like, yo, if the opportunity ever comes and we can open up a store like this, we got to, you know? Fact. And uh, just like we were talking about before, like timing is everything. You know, we had the store that Dank Bart's in, we had that for five years, right. paying rent for it. You know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we just never used it because at the time, um, in the weed days, you know, weed used to come back in like big bags and shit like that. Yeah. So we just used it for storage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then when uh, we became legal and the space opened up, we didn't need as much storage or whatever. It's like, yo, God, do something legendary with that. Mm -hmm. And um, at first, the crazy thing is, at first we did a gym because my man Akeem yeah. was big into the gym stuff. And, uh, you know, we. We just wanted to come together. We always wanted to do something together, us three as homies. So we built a gym, like we worked on it for like a year, built it out. Damn. And then right before we were about to open, we had a falling out. Shit. Us three, and we ended up not opening up the gym. And the dope thing is, is that like, we're all such good brothers. I, it didn't even affect our relationship 1%. That's mm -hmm. dope. You know what I'm saying? We just, we, That's all, real shit. we all understood that, yo, maybe this isn't the best move for all of us. And it turned out to be the best move to not open. Because mm -hmm. my bro Akeem ended up getting the CMOS shit popping. Right. Right. And then we ended up opening Dank Mart Dang in there man. right after. And so both we of you guys popped ripped up. apart the gym one night. Me and bro were smoking and I remember like it was yesterday. We we're like, yo, what do we do with this shop? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we're just like, yo, we've always wanted to open up this store. How long we've been talking about opening up a bodega style smoke shop store for yeah. the culture? Mm -hmm. Like, damn, years. I'm like, yo, now's the time. Mm -hmm. There was ever a time. It's right now. Uh, and, you know, we opened it. And 
it popped off like it popped off a million times bigger than we ever thought <laughs> it was crazy bro you know, like, I it was shit, just meant know. to be a compliment to THC like we never intended for it to blow up but when you like I say when you do things organically and like you know you're passionate about things sometimes they just amazing things happen yeah, you know yeah, we yeah. didn't we didn't even when we opened it we didn't even try we weren't even trying to make money we're just like yo we're just gonna do we this because it's, it. it's dank as fuck okay. you know like <laughs> yeah. to have a fucking store next <laughs> to a weed shop like so it was just like for the culture type yeah you know what i'm saying point, we, yeah. we're like yo if we make a few hundred bucks every day we're laughing you know yeah it's all good you know yeah. But the shit ended up blowing up <laughs> like crazy, Fucking you know? billboards. A million yeah, billboards. times more. Like, Lines up bro, the, the f- Like, in the first month, we were on, like, f- three or four radio stations, like, five news publications. Right. It, like, and we, I swear to God, on my mom's life, we didn't pay for one dollar of that. You know, like, yeah. all that shit mm-hmm. was organic. So, yeah. you know, and I'm super blessed. And one thing I'll always say is fucking... Dangmar, that's Snacky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's him. Mm-hmm. He was the one to really get it popping. He was, because I was working at THC, you yeah. know? And I didn't have any employees at the time. So I was working open to close at THC. Yeah. Snacky's the one who really got it popping for Dangmar. He was grinding you know, on the he stories, He was grinding. Too. He put that shit on his back. Yeah, on dude. His back, back. Yeah. There's no Dangmar without Snacky. Back. You know, all I'm here to do is carry on his legacy. Represent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never wanted to be the Snack Guy. I always, even though like the Dangmar brand meant so much for me, I always wanted Snacky to be that guy, you know? Mm-hmm. But shit happened, and mm-hmm. you know, now I got my bro here to carry on THC Back, so I can focus on Dangmar, mm. you know? So now I'm really trying to. I see the vision. You know? Yeah. yeah. I'm really trying to carry on my bro's legacy up for Back. Dangmar, you know? That's respect, bro. And like, so we heard from the owner's perspective, and like with you, Colin, like, how is that kind of like, how has it been since you moved here? Like, just working and being in that environment and finally getting to actually experience it and help build it. Well, it's crazy. I mean, again, like I've been watching THC. I've been watching these guys on social media for years before I moved here. Yeah. Obviously came out here and visited them and knew them and stuff. But to be actually be here, interact with the community every day and stuff is insane, bro. Like he's been talking about how we've been giving back to the community since day one. Just a few days ago on Friday, we did our first Fresh Drop Friday event where we came back, bro. We had like free ice cream sandwiches, fried Mm -hmm. chicken, pizza, like give away swag and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's it's not for anything other than we just want to make people happy. We love the look on Bring people's face when they walk through the door and they're, <laughs> yeah. they're oh, yeah, surprised that there's some free food and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, yo. Yeah. And that's what really means a lot to us. I mean, yo, it's like what he just said is like the biggest honor I could ask for, bro. Like, you know, continuing on THC's legacy, I think is uh, is huge and be able to help him and support him in continuing okay. Snacky's legacy as well, man. Like there's, there's no yeah. greater mission I could ask for than that. And uh, I'm just, I'm happy to see you step into your snack bundles uh, persona. Yeah. 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 Embrace it, yo. Yeah, yeah. yeah be sure to film, bro, but I think you can do it, man. Have all confidence, man. Appreciate you, man. No, we got a really good team at THC, yo. It's definitely not just me. Yeah. Without, like Nick, Ren, and all the, all the, the girls, man. That everyone's like, it's really solid team, bro. We got it's the awesome whole team, team, yo. And yeah. I got to experience that, like, working there a little bit last summer and just, like, the environment. What do you mean there? a little bit, bro? <laughs> <laughs> You're working there from time, yo. <laughs> you put hella work in there, <laughs> <laughs> but for real, <laughs> but for real, man, like, like the I'm I'm from a barber shop, right? So it's really t- like tight niche. Like all our boys are like we're dogs for life, and I I I'm so selective where I work because in other workplaces it's it's sometimes toxic. It's sometimes not the environment you truly want to grow in. But when I pull up to Dankmore, first thing Snacky's like, I remember that night. Remember we I pulled up to the to the, to the compound and I I rolled through and I ended up buying. Um, the uh, pumpkin spice Oreos and I bring it to the counter and then you come up to Snacky while he's checking me out and he's like, yo, it's my bro, he wants to work here. Yo, yeah. yeah, and then and right, and he's, he's, like, he's, like, he's like, he's like, come on Tuesday, <laughs> pull up on Tuesday and I pulled up on that Tuesday and I, since then I was just like, holy shit, like, yo. like, bro, when I was feeling down like, and I was, I was going through some shit at home or whatever I was going through mentally, I come to Dang, just to just to kind of like working in my mind of it but it was even more than that it was like church and that's why i worked there on sundays i told snacky he's like i want to work there on sundays because like church for me i guess oh, yeah, he's snacky he, he would he would he would teach me other ways and like I've, i only knew him for like three or four months snacky yo but he had like an impact on my life that is like n- not oh, much no. people in my life have like ever done that's that the type me. of energy he had you know bro yeah, it's, like, it's, it was so real that's the shit that i'd be missing every yeah day, bro every minute you know Sucks. i remember my first time ever going to the deck where right? i brought him like a, i brought him an av crew neck yeah and then um we were just chopping he it wanted up. that one too <laughs> yeah, yeah we we were just chopping it up and then um uh snacky comes to the door 
Yo! And I'm like, oh shit! Like the just the vibe just got like you super. You feel it in the room. Yeah. The energy was on a hundred thousand every day. Hundred thousand. Angel energy, bro. Insane. Yeah, bro. But and like now that like the crazy part to me, bro, it's like it's only been like a year and a few months. But you guys are already expanding like a new store. Yeah. Bro. Right. Like, has that always been like? Uh, a vision like to have multiple locations no like i said man we were just trying to keep it small time but you know <laughs> yeah. so after we open honestly i've never seen anything like it like yo you know obviously dang Mart is the leader of all this shit like me and my bro we we changed the game for the snack game forever mm -hmm. we were the first people to ever do it like this out here you know at that level too bro like, and then after literally like five six months after like now there's like a hundred stores, you know. Just I've more. never, I've never seen anything like it. Like, if it's not stores, it's online stores, deliveries, whatever. And yo, no, I'm not knocking them. Like, blessings to everyone getting money. It's all get money. You mm -hmm. know, I hope you guys get money. But for me, it was just like, yo, we really gotta solidify this brand yeah. and expand. You know, because Dangmar, like, you know, I'm not being cocky or anything, but I think Dangmar's the strongest snack brand in the country. It is. For sure, yeah. so it is. It it deserves to be not just in South Van Hood. You yeah. know, like Dangmar should be in all the most legendary spots, you know? So we're gonna go for Robson first. Let's pick the most know? legendary spots. We got spot. a couple other uh, spots in our in our back pocket that mm -hmm. we're gonna be coming through with, you know. We're gonna be out in Toronto soon. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? So Bless. we're just gonna coast to coast. We're gonna, you know, coast to coast like butter and toast. One at a time. We're gonna keep it going, man. Keep expanding. Just trying to do this for my bro, you know? Yeah. What's, is that, aside from that, like without giving away too much, what else is kind of like the vision for the compound for the future? Or even like, what's just like a thing that you guys really want to accomplish? What's the thing? Oh man, I don't know if there's one thing. I, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure all my guys on the team are eating. I want to make sure they're all living a good life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mosh. Yeah, I want to make sure everyone, I want to get it to a point so that everyone's eating good, you know? Everyone can buy a house and do their thing. Yeah. And I just want to keep Damn, changing you know? the culture. Can I send my resume? <laughs> 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 it's good, you know? That's, you know, that's, that's what makes me happy, you know? And sometimes that's been my downfalls too, is that I'm too giving that's around me, but I just want to see all of us win, you know what I'm saying? And I just want to keep doing legendary things for the culture. Right. There's not like one thing in particular that I'm going to be like, yo, you know, I'm, I'm the type of guy where I'll mm. never be satisfied you know it's not about the money for me you know it's for me it's about the legacy so i'll never be content building this legacy Facts. we're only here for a short time you know until the day comes i'm going to be building that legacy every day mm -hmm. right, you know right. what i'm saying i think that's the mentality you kind of have to go with for sure when you're doing these type of things when you're trying to build something really bigger than yourself i don't think yeah that's the thing is because another thing too is like Sometimes on during like while you're on that journey, you're gonna hit milestones that you actually never expected or even wanted to hit. But then there's still milestones, so you gotta you gotta no, celebrate sure. those wins, right? Bro, I didn't. I never thought in a million years to be to be here doing this and you know affecting people like this, inspiring people. <laughs> you know, like I still remember just starting. Like I'm not. I won't go into too much detail, but I just remember starting so small time that like you know smoking shake. Me and Snacky ate chunky soup every day for a year. Yeah. You know, like, I never in a million years thought we were going to turn to this. You know, so that's why, like, I'm smiling. I'm, every day is a blessing just to, you know, to be doing this right now. Yeah, and you see it too, like, the community always reaching out to and showing love and shit. I think that's a strong word here and, like, in this whole conversation. And if anyone can, like, take anything from this is your community. They're going to be the ones who are going to, be with you on your ups and downs but if you can really you know just care about people you know i'm in the service industry too for hair and like in a way my music too i just want to help people and make people feel good right so like if anything if you guys want to know how to build a community or the community doesn't have to start with a ton of people it could be the ones who are around you in the same room your brothers your your cousins your best friends you know no, it sure. starts off so small and when great minds think alike just more amazing things can happen and more ideas that are shared you know that creates like this bigger vision you know and i hear you talk about all your goals spence and it's like it's super inspiring um have you ever had like a time where like someone like you're telling someone your vision and they just kind of like shat on it and how did you like react oh, yeah, on that? A ton of times, bro. Yeah. How That's would you deal I'm with something like today. that? You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. Like, man, 
when I got in the weed game, it wasn't so glorified like it was now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And de definitely the way we started, a ton of people called me a loser, things like that, you know, just because how small time we were starting, people were making fun of it, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Totally. Even my own mom and dad told me I, was, I wasn't going to work out, you know? So I'm used to that, but, you know, I love it. I love yeah. it. Like, <sighs> one thing, when we were closing the store in 2018, THC, before it went, um, before we got legalized mm -hmm. or, or whatever and got the license, I remember a month before I went to a meeting and a guy was trying to buy me out and he was like, yo, I just want to say first and foremost, you'll never be able to make your store a destination spot again. Yeah. You know, and like that's part of the reason why there's Dangmar now. You exactly. know what I mean? Just because like he really fucking inspired me like with that kind of energy, you know? Like, yeah, no so fuck. So like, shit. yeah, to me it's not a bad thing, people shitting on your dreams and saying you can't make it because man, that just makes you want to go and get it a hundred times more. No, totally. You know it's watching. I mean? It's like watching Tyler Hero's um, like um, high school mixtapes when the whole crowd just saying like oh, overrated sure. and he just proves them wrong. I think it's like a big like connection with whether it's business, music, or whatever it is. They have like parallels with For hoop sure. and sports. It's, only it's the mentality. Yeah. I've seen so many parallels in just everyday things with hooping, bro. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Hoop is a great metaphor for like life itself, yo. Big time, man. Uh, what was like with the, one of the when you first started, and I don't even know what the fuck I'm trying to say here. But <laughs> <laughs> when you first started, and you were like, "Let's say I'm gonna do this," did it? Does it look like anything that's actually happening now with your guys' lives? Like, is this what you pictured you would do when, Hell you, were, no, man. when you were young as fuck? When well, I was like when I was how young? Well, well, um, let's say like you know like you're coming out of high school. Coming out of high school? Yeah. Coming out of high school, I thought I was going to go to the NBA or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up going to New York to play ball. Yeah. And uh, I ended up starting to smoke weed like my first day out there. <laughs> and I got kicked off the team within like three, four months. So that dream was gone. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. To change. But then, man, I fell in love with weed. You totally. know what I'm saying? And the true calling came through. I just wanted to be the neighborhood weed man. You know, there like, you go. that's all I ever wanted to be. Cause I just wanted to be the neighborhood weed man, you know? Totally, yeah. yeah. Fucking, we never thought it was going to be some shit like this, so yeah. I'm just blessed every day, grateful every day, you know? What about you, Colin, bro? Like, man, well, I, I mean, I didn't, once I start, first started getting into cannabis and everything, like, mm -hmm. if you told me back when I was, like, 15, 16 that this was going to be my job, bro, I would be mm -hmm. so pumped up, man. I'd be so happy. I sell weed. I fucking talk about weed on social media. I interact with people all day, and I get to, like, you know, Smoke dope, weed and right? talk to people. Smoke weed, bro. That would be like a dream for me. And get paid so, for it. It's a and get paid for it. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I know. We, I know. We use the word legendary a lot, right? It's part of like the branding and everything. So, I don't know. What's one of like the most legendary memories you guys have ever had since probably you can say since we started, since you guys started like your journey and shit. One of the most legendary memories I ever had. Yeah. Shit, bro. So honestly, there's been like a thousand, man. Yeah, that's why the legendary. You know Fucking the road to get here, man. It's been the most craziest road in the world. You know, like, like I, I there's gonna be a movie about it in a couple years, few years. You know, like honestly, I can't really pinpoint one time, man. But shit, man. That's dope because it just shows that like. You're re you really lived in those moments when it happened and that's what you need to do is be present in those moments because that's how when you enjoy it all for sure right so there's so many memories because you in you uh, were present you i know? would say one of the most legendary yeah. memories for me is coming off <laughs> a two-year closure you know we were closed for two years and then we popped back off with not just one store but two stores yeah and just coming out and seeing the line wrapped all the way down the street around the block just like after being closed for two years man that was probably one of the most legendary memories for me. Just, Hell you yeah. know, that energy, the you know, the comeback and all that. You know, that was definitely one of the most legendary memories. And being in Forbes this, this year, that was crazy. That yeah. was uh, something I'm super proud of, man. Yeah. Especially starting out how we did, you know, like. Yeah. How did that come about? Like, they just reached out to you one day? Yeah, they reached out to us one day and they're like, yo, can we do a story about you? And, <laughs> you know, the rest was history, man. Fuck. If you told me I was going to be in Forbes magazine <laughs> type shit when I was young, I would never believe you. I would have said you're capping, you know? Like, Crazy. That's one of the most things I'm most proud about for me and my bro. 
what, you know, obviously accomplishing what you guys have accomplished up till now. What are some like, I guess, goals that you guys have for the future, or just things you guys want to do? Goals I have for the, I want to keep expanding, man. Yeah. I feel like um, we got two of the most legendary brands in this history of Vancouver, and I just feel like it'd be a shame to not expand. You know, Facts. I've always been so. Uh, you know, we were like the one store that didn't really expand, you know, because I was just so in love with, with South Van and I just never wanted to leave or do anything outside of it, you know. Right. But I think I maybe I'm getting older, but I just kind of realized, like, yo, it'd kind of be silly not to expand. We got, you know, two super legendary brands. So that's the goal in the future. Hopefully we can get a few more THCs and a few more Dank Marts going, you know. Yeah. Keep building the brand. So that's what I'm working on right now every day. Word. And for you, Colin, what would you say is like a goal of yours? Honestly, my, my biggest goal, at least within THC, it's always been like, since I moved here, so I, the main thing I do is help with the marketing. Right. And, and like the main thing that I'm focused on, bro, is bringing back that like excitement and that fun that they had pre-recreational legalization. Mm -hmm. When they legalize, legalized like federally, a lot of the rules changed and a lot of the fun stuff that you could do back in the right. day, you can't necessarily mm -hmm. do anymore. Oh, so yeah. now we got to like be more creative. Uh, to find compliant ways to like still bring that sense of community, that sense of fun that and, back. and excitement. So oh, I mean, yeah. that's the main thing is just like doing stuff like those events and seeing like the smiles on people's faces, bringing back those customers that used to shop with these guys, like mm -hmm. having stuff in the store that, that'll, you know, be good for them and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And just like bringing that excitement back is the main thing for mm -hmm. sure. And then obviously, you know, just continue supporting. Well, I want to see where this goes, bro. It's, it's a really good opportunity. It's exciting, bro. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the weed, weed thing for a little bit. Like, I mean, obviously, legalization is great for everybody. You guys can, you know, open up the store and everything, not have to worry about getting raided and everything. But I don't know what your guys' take on that. Like, I don't think we really hear that too too much. On honestly, it's a blessing, man. Anyone who's been in the weed game as long as me, man, to be able to get a paycheck and put it in your bank, man. But I mean, to look over your shoulder. That's the biggest blessing, man. <laughs> that's like, a fact. Yeah. I'm all for legalization, man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it was always a dream of mine to have money in my bank account and. You know, like, it's, it's a blessing. Well, I remember when, like, it first got legalized, everyone was kind of, like, bumming this to go to the street boys. But now the quality of the growers no, sure. and, it's like, the LPs and stuff are, like, up. awesome now, you know? I always and told people it was going to be, like, five years. Yeah. What are we at now? Like, three years? Yeah, two and a half, three. I still, I think, I still think we're, like, even a couple of years away to, totally. to get it back to that level. But even now, like, I'll admit, man, Some the first year and a year and a half, it was tragic, man. Yeah. Bro, I saw pearls the size of yo, my pinky. I was yeah. impressed, bro. Like, when we first opened the store, man, I used to be known for selling the most kill shit, man. Yo. The dankest shit you ever seen in your life. You pull up and jar I, in your I, face. When I reopened, I had to sell this shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was depressing, bro. Like, I won't even lie. Like, the first week or two, I was depressed, bro. Wow. Working in the store. Because, like, man, what makes me happy is showing someone... That's the dankest shit they ever seen. When they look at it, they're like, holy sh you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the type of shit that made me happy with the weed industry. It was always finding the best. Like, yeah. that's what we were known for, you know? Yeah. But they kind of took that away, and, like, the quality was so bad. Like, there wasn't one thing I could sell to someone and feel good about them going home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, fast forward a couple years, yo, it's almost at that level. Like, it's pretty much caught up. It's not quite there yet, mm -hmm. but it's almost there. Like, now there's like a bunch of products in the store that I'm smoking myself. No, you exactly. Know? Like I, I feel like I got a higher, um, you know, I might be more pickier than anyone you ever seen. And there's still things in the store that, you know, I'm loving right now. So Fuck. the legal market's definitely been, you know, doing its thing, slowly getting, you know, get in there, but we're almost there. You guys have the best selection in the city though. Appreciate Cause it. like I've been to multiple dispensaries out here and like, yeah, they all have, we all have the same stuff, you know, same branding, same growers, but they don't source their stuff and they're not as picky as like what you guys have done. Sure. And that's why like people go back there is cause if you want legal, thank you, you pull up there. Like, yo, fine. we take, we take buying so serious. Yeah, man. I like bet. so serious. Yeah, like yeah. if people seen how serious we take it, you guys will be like, Yo, these guys are nuts, you know? Yeah. Like, we try every strain, like, grade it. You know, like, bros will stay up all night waiting for the product to come in, you know? Like, like we, we get serious about that. And, like, you know, we that's one thing that we've always been known for is having the most selection. So, you know, for, like, the first year, we didn't I didn't even take any money back. You know what I'm saying? I just you put that money all back into buying more strains, more strains. Yeah, yeah. You know, so now we have a ton of strains. And I think that's just the way it should be, you know? Like, we should be able to walk in a cannabis store and have hella flavors. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So. To the point Spencer is making, yo, it's getting better every day. 
the big thing that Canada got wrong when we legalized is that all the craft growers that this guy's been working with for so long that was just had that crazy dank, mm -hmm. they didn't legalize those guys. They didn't make it easy for those guys to get into the market. Instead, they had all these like corporate dudes in suits growing like really shitty cannabis in giant greenhouses all across the country. But now they're uh, slowly getting in. Yeah. So you now know, they're finally getting all their those licenses. Old, all those old guys now, they're slowly getting in. So now that's why you're seeing like the quality go up because yeah. You know, they're, they're licensing the OGs and you're seeing some familiar faces in the game now. Whereas like the first year and a half, you didn't know, no one was getting in yet, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's been a blessing, man. Are we going to see, see a, uh, are we going to see like a THC brand of uh, weed out there one day? Oh yeah, man. It's, it's in the works Bring right now, man. It's, <laughs> it's in the works right now. We got, oh, some, shit. we got some things going on, man. One thing about me is I don't really like to announce shit too much mm -hmm. until it's there, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Um, like, even Dangmar, I might have taken a couple pictures, but no one knew what the <laughs> fuck I was talking about, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Cause like, oh, yeah, 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 I've seen that. You know, so I, I like to just keep things under wraps until, you yeah. know, it's official. So, but we got some things in the works, definitely, you know, like a lot of the strains that we were famous for, we still have and stuff, so definitely want to get those in the legal market More. only do things the legal way so when you do things like that it, t it just takes a long time but nice. i think you're gonna see it soon hopefully man More we'll really coming nice. out with some of our brands in the weed game that's dope bro hell yeah man with that one of the shits i'll be smoking <laughs> has to be some peanut butter <laughs> some peanut butter breath yeah <laughs> with, with everything that you guys kind of like accomplished now what motivates you guys now to keep going Honestly, for me, bro, what motivates me is, um, you know, just keeping my bro's legacy going, mm -hmm. you know, keeping his name alive out here every day, making sure the baby's good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and just making sure she has the, the mo like, the most dankest life of all time, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's what keeps me motivated, bro, like, you know? Ask my bro first pass, like, I, like, I didn't want to do anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I was just done. Like, I didn't even want to open, come back and open the stores, you know? Mm -hmm. But after I heard about his kid, I'm just like, yo, we got to keep this shit going, you know? Because bro would have done the same shit for me, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, There's no one else in the world who was as solid as him, and he would have done the same thing for me. So that's what motivates me now is just, just want to keep this shit going because I know he would too, you know? Want to keep his name alive, take mm -hmm. this shit to a whole nother level, you know? Hell yeah. Keep the legacy going, man. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. You know, we've been through a lot of shit this year, man. A lot of shit we've been through this year, man. A lot of people wouldn't be able to keep it going, you know? Yeah. We're just taking it one day at a time, man. 1% better every Hell day. yeah, man. Day. Yeah. Closer to 10,000 hours, bro. Straight up, man. And what motivates you, Colin? I mean, partially the same answer, bro. Like, that's part of the reason I'm here, you know? Yeah. Is to help that, is to help him do that. And, uh, Past that, bro, like, you know, I'm young. There's so much to do, so much to learn, so much. This, dude, the fact that, I, again, I get to work in legal cannabis and nice. uh, do that as a job is insane, bro. So just waking up every day and, and not stressing about, you know, work, going to some gig that I hate or putting a suit on or some nice. shit like that, bro. I can just, you know, live my life. Money doesn't motivate me anymore. It used to, bro. Money used to be my, like, everything that my life is about. But, yeah. you know, I've seen so much death this year, like, I had a few really good bros die this year, you know? Yeah. And my, my brother, so it's just like, one thing you take from that is that like, yo, when you go, you can't take none of this shit with you. Nah. You know what I'm saying? People just be fighting over your shit after you die, you know? Like, yeah. so that money doesn't really motivate me anymore. I'm just trying to just focus on the legacy. That's what always is motivating me, bro. Just keep building the legacy, keep building the legacy, you know? Yeah. Cause all, all you want is your name to live on, you know? Yeah. You know it's for saying? the next you. Because even when you have all the bread in the world, like, even if, when it comes down to health, bro, like... Health is no, the first. No amount of bread can help for you, sure. bro, when that shit really creeps up on you. For sure. Today, so. Focus on that legacy. Hell that yeah, legacy bro. will live on longer than any bread that you'll ever have, I feel like. Hell yeah, bro. Yes, sir. What does, um, let's kind of, like, get a little perspective from you guys what does success mean to you guys i think success for me means just waking up and being able to live your life how you want mm. you know what i mean like not no one telling you like yo be here at this time or like yo you got to go do this like to really be able to wake up and to say hey i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go do this and i'm you know 
that to me is like so the freedom. ultimate level of success is just having freedom man because yeah. fuck I, I worked so many jobs man like i used to work at nando's metro town i worked at <laughs> no sport shit. check i worked at jersey city every store possible man i used to work at the bay at oak ridge you know what i mean <laughs> i used to do this i used to do landscaping I used to do everything man so i know what it's like to fucking come to a job and just have some jackass <laughs> like a, Yo. you know bossing you around and like to me man what I'm so blessed about is just being able to wake up and being like, yo, I can do what I want to do for this day, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what success means to me, man. More than any, like, dollar amount or anything. It's just like, yeah, just having freedom out here in life, Real you know? Shit, yeah. that's, that, I think that's so dope, too, when you can actually, like, not obviously command your own schedule because you obviously got to be places to meet other people, but just to have that control over it you know for sure that's one of the things i hated bro when i worked a few nine to fives like i hated i i fucking woke up late so many times to the point where i'm just like yo i'm working from home today i'm working from home today he'll tell you this, this guy like that's a crazy thing too right when we were setting up when we were first setting up our businesses bro i was still working a nine to five because you had to keep the bed in right and then there's some days where i'm just i'm i'm, I'm waking up late i'm telling them yeah i'm gonna call in sick or like i'm gonna work from home I call them over and then we're like setting up our businesses and shit. Yeah, really, yeah. Crazy shit, dude. You found something you're passionate about now, you know? Yeah, bro. I think that's like uh Definitely not knocking working a nine to five, you know? Hundred percent. I'm if definitely not about knocking it, about that. Yeah. You know, all I'm saying is that like try to, you know, before before this whole thing is over, like try to find something that you're passionate about. You know, obviously, you yeah, know, you gotta do the nine to five thing. Sometimes in a situation you just got to pay the bills you know mm -hmm. but hopefully like you can uh, have that opportunity in your life at least one time to do something you're passionate about and experience you that. know because that's that's the biggest blessing in life one of the biggest blessings i would say is just to be able to do something that you're passionate about because if you think about it man how many hours you spend at work you know spend that's, eight hours that's a big eight. part of your life you know and you're sleeping for like five to, five to eight if hours you can find something that you're that you enjoy going to do for work man that's a success that's a blessing yeah, yeah, yeah. you know because yeah like i said you spend a big portion of your life working you know so try to find not knocking anyone doing nine to five because get it by any means but yeah you know hopefully you can in your life find that thing that makes you happy you know totally yo yeah your passion a lot of people especially when you're younger you don't necessarily know what your passion is but you're that you what your passion is is that one thing that if you weren't doing it you wouldn't feel alive no for sure and that's mm -hmm. like that's the one that's the one way you can kind of tell for me is that, that was passion? selling weed man <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like, yeah i love selling weed like lebron loves to play ball i love yeah. to sell weed you know and that it's probably because tough. of the people that you were, you know, interacting with and seeing the smile on the people's faces. That's oh, why you loved sure. it so much because you, your passion is people. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's weed and people. And I just always loved weed so much. I'm like, man, these guys are about to have the best time of their life out here. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, weed is a, a blessing, man. You know? <laughs> weed is <laughs> such a blessing. Like, Every time these guys walk out of your store, you know they're about to make it. Like, you know, so, yeah. Well, how, um, is there anything else that you guys, like... Uh, want to venture into in the future or is this is this the lane right here i mean there's a, there's a bunch of things that uh i wanted to get into but you know we just talk every day we yeah. talk every day about random new businesses and stuff <laughs> yeah. Doing, but totally. yeah, so. there's a lot of things that me and my bro had been talking about but i'm just gonna take it one day at a time for now i'm just gonna i'm just trying to go a hundred percent all in on dang martin thc yeah. you know what i mean like maybe in like five years or something the oh, actually, the other thing is, would be working on the movie. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me and my bro finished that script like a year ago, like b before he passed. You know? Mm. So like, that's my biggest goal and motivation in life. Like, I feel like that's the one thing in my life that I still have on left to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like I feel like I've pretty much done everything I wanted to do out here. You know what I mean? Except make that movie. So like, my goal, I just posted on Instagram last night. I want to work for two more years and then awesome. just focus on this movie, man, because mm -hmm. it's going to be like the most legendary movie that ever came out of Canada. Man. Soundtrack has to be hard, yo. It's going to be hard, man. It's gonna Put be some hard. local artists in. The movie's <laughs> going to be hard. It's going to be like paid in full, but from ca from Canada. You know? <laughs> no, straight up. And it's just some, there's nothing in the movie that's not true. Everything 
Like our life is a movie, our life is a movie, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, us, it's everything from, the, from day one till now. You know what I mean? Who's your, um, who's your favorite character from uh, Painful? My favorite character? Or who's your guy? Definitely Mitch. Right? Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Mitch. That, Paid in Full, man, that's my favorite movie of all time. It's yeah, I think close. I've watched that shit like 10 times, dude. Bro, I've watched that shit. I'm actually, like, when, when I used to live in New York, that's where they filmed Paid in Full. Like, so for me... That's where it happened, too, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. like, for me, that's part of the reason why I even went there to play ball was because Paid in Full. You know, like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I want to fucking be out there so bad, you know? I want to experience. experience this shit. I'll see like, this real shit. I ended up being right where the movie was, like, that's shot crazy. and everything. Like, it was just crazy, you know? So the same way that you did that, you went to New York to just get that experience. That makes sense why you moved all the way out here just to experience this, bro. Well, I mean, when it comes to weed too, like Vancouver and BC is the spot to be, bro. Like you can't learn oh. about weed anywhere else in the country, anywhere else, probably in the world, about weed like you can't here. It's uh, super Are we amazing. a top destination for the whole world, bro? Hell yeah. That's the vibe. BC's the BC bud, bro. It's known all over the world, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere, yeah. bro. You see that anywhere. Yeah. I've been to Amsterdam, Jamaica, Cali. You know, like usually when you hear about Best weed in the world. Those are the spots you're gonna hear. Amsterdam, Jamaica, yeah, Cali. Yeah, We're yeah. better than all of those, man. <laughs> this is the best weed in the world right here, man. Mm -hmm. Best weed, no cap. And is our culture up up to par with the other cities too, or even better? Mm. Like I feel like our culture could be like, you know. Better? A little bit better, but that's what that's why we're here working are every you day, here, you know? Maybe? I feel like Cali's definitely got their culture shit on point. Listen. You know, but like when it comes to Canada, our growers are the best though. Yeah. yeah. You know? Our growers are the best out here. Get the best water. I might be biased. Like, if you obviously you go ask a dude in Cali who's got the best <laughs> yeah, I got the best You yeah, know? Yeah. But I'm, I'm like no bias. I'm just basing it from a connoisseur. I've smoked the best weed consistently out here, you know? So I'm going to have to say it's definitely BC. BC, baby. Coming for you. <laughs> if you guys could go back to like, um, I don't know, let's say like 15 years ago, and you can only talk to them for like, uh, like five ten minutes with the purpose of like trying to help them avoid any mistakes what would you tell that younger self mm. i would definitely tell myself to be real mindful who i keep around mm. keep in my circle you know that's a fact yeah. you know what i'm saying definitely would have told myself that you know but don't regret nothing a lot of the lessons yeah. i learned I'm blessed. I learned them at a younger age. You you can only tell your younger self that because you went through it. No, for sure. Yeah. One thing about me, man, like, fuck, I've been through so much, taken so many L's, but I don't regret any of them. Mm. Except the only thing I regret and wish I could get back is my brother. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing in this world. Other than that, I feel like, you know, everything I went through got me to be here. Yeah, you me. know, I probably would have told myself to just, like, find some more balance, too. You know, because my first four or five years working, I only work, you know, and I lost a lot of good relationships because nice. of that. You know, like, I probably would have told myself to have a little bit more balance in life, you know, but it's hard to tell that to a guy who's so young opening up a business, like, I, you're, you're naturally going to spend right. all your time there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't but sleep, yeah. Definitely would have been ideal to, you know, have a little bit, at least a little bit of balance, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I try to really tell myself nowadays too because I'm in that phase. I'm in that where it's like the mindset is kind of if I don't work, then this bread's not going to come in. I'm the oh, one who's sure. controlling this flow. Sometimes I wish me and my bro did more chilling. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, but we're living like, life, you know what I'm saying? Experiencing like just. But like, that we're so locked in on the grind. Like, literally, like the last 10 years of my life is just work, 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 work. Like, mm -hmm. don't really ha remember having too many days off and shit, you know, but no regrets, man. I love every day. I love working every day. I love mm -hmm. what I do, so I'm blessed. I'm gonna tell you, I, I definitely take that to heart. Like, I definitely need to make it a, a, an effort to really, like, make time for your peers. I would have told growing. myself, too, to focus on health. Because I didn't start tapping into this health, like, a year or two ago, you know? Mm. I would have told myself from, like, time, mm -hmm. yo, Stop eating all that shit, you know? Like, be, he he be healthy, you know? Like, it's all about balance. Honestly, yo, I would have told myself to, to worry about the right things. Like, I worried about some stupid shit. I stressed about some stupid shit. I wasted a lot of time. 
Um, I would just tell myself like Always. everything's gonna be okay if you just trust the process. You have a good heart. And that's a like, big one, man. Big you just one, keep bro. going, bro. Like you, you can't worry about the stuff. You just gotta keep going. Facts, that's, dude. That's man. That's one of the biggest things I would tell myself. Yeah. It's just like I know, dude. If it's meant to be, like this is just a concept that I grasped in the last year. Like if it's meant to be, it's gonna be. Yeah. You know, it's gonna happen at the right time. Yeah. But I used to be such a stress case. You know, like always just. Like, yo, waiting, like, thinking about everything is so much, you know? And, like, now I learn that, like, yo, shit happens, happens for a reason, you know? I moving. wish I would have been that smart back in the day, but I guess the only reason I'm like this now is because I've been through so much shit, so it's like, you know? That's real shit, too, bro. Especially now with, like, social media and everything, there's so much noise that hits you every day. That's why it's important to take like those breaks. Take your cleanses, yeah. too, right? you take your he just got off one. I too. got off one, and then yeah. when you come back, you're like more inspired, and sometimes it resets. What you kind of got to take a back seat and kind of just like live your life because I feel like real life over internet every day, you know. Sometimes I wish social media wasn't even invented. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> right? Yo, I was. I forgot who. I don't know who. If I was telling any of these guys this, but we're looking back at like our. We found, we found one of our old phones, okay. and there was screenshots of the old Instagram. So then we were looking at some of the photos that we would post and it was just po posts that you wanted to post. Like it could be a picture of a floor. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because you just wanted to post that. So there's like real passion. Nowadays, everything is about promoting this business or looking really good and shit. And it's crazy how like social media has just changed over the years. And obviously, you know, we use it as a tool now because we have businesses, right? But it's funny though. It's kind of going back, getting more authentic. Like the, the kind of content that's doing well now is some of those photo dumps, the authentic stuff shit. like that, or just exactly. like, or like being real. Like even well, the, the type of captions that this guy does and stuff, just being real and like talking yeah. about his life, like and, and letting you in. It's like that's the type of stuff that's doing well. So I think we've kind of like gone through a cycle where we're coming back around. And the, I'm glad. Is the way, <laughs> is the way to go. I don't know if I can take this much noise much longer, dude. If it, if social, if Instagram and all that didn't make money, I wouldn't be on it as much. You know, like I run the Dangmar Instagram. That's a lot of work, man. Like I'm on my phone a lot. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I wasn't. You gotta post the next thing. You know, but you know, it's part of the business. Yeah. So I've kind of learned, but hopefully, man, in a couple of years, I won't be on my phone at all. I'll just have somebody else to do it. I'll just have a flip phone, you know? <laughs> and I'll just be... <laughs> landline, landline. Yeah. I don't even, even like all this social Even when you leave the crib, you can't take your phone with yeah, you. Yeah, you know? Just go out and enjoy <laughs> life more. You know? Yeah, yeah. We begin too lost in our phones. Dude, man. lost in the sauce, bro. Like, now you go to the gym, man. It's like an hour to wait for one machine because buddy's, <laughs> buddy's on the g thing, like, texting, like, looking on Amazon, ordering shit, you know? Like, yo, my dude, do that at home, man. What the fuck are you doing? Yo, can I work you in real you? No, 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 I still got a yeah. yeah. set to go. Set. It's like, yo, what are you working on? Your thumbs up? Fuck up, man. Finding the next song I, and shit. You know, I feel like, fuck, our generation, we got... We got have you gotta do better, man. Yo, I'm a, I'm Fuck. part of it too. Like yeah. I'm on my phone. Yeah. Not in the gym, though. I'm not that dude. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you, you know, better I, not be big I, part I of even yourself. Keep trying to remind myself, like yo, like. You know, have an allocated time for the social media, like, oh, or else, fuck, man, you could just be on it too much, you know? Yeah, if yeah. social media is not your business, I think you still got to treat it kind of like it is a business, where you have that time that you allocate ah, to it. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, open hours. Kind of yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Honestly, hours. I think having social media as, like, my, my job honestly helps me disconnect from, like, the, the being as a person on it and just helps me think of it as, like, a, as a business person. A I don't really, really stress about social too much. I just think about it in, the, in terms of, like, you know, business and the just business like thing. things happen. Some posts do well, some posts don't, you know. True. Now he's handling the THC. I used to do the THC one too. This guy was running all there the There was a time I was doing my personal Dangmar and THC. And working in the shop, open the clothes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I say, I'm not new to this, I'm true, true to this. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, been, it's been time. And that account's been through some shit too, right? Fuck it. Bro, I've it's been deleted like five or six times. <laughs> Knock on wood, even my personal one's been deleted. Yeah. You know what I mean? But one thing about us, we just keep it, keep it moving, man. Keep it moving and grooving. It's like I always like to say, you know? Yeah. You know? Let's get straight to it, baby. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people ask though and don't understand why our accounts get deleted. So like Facebook, Instagram is based in the States and it's still unfortunately federally uh, illegal right, there. Right, right. So technically cannabis content isn't supposed to be on their platforms and they can remove it whenever they want. A lot of people don't understand. We don't understand too. Like obviously we're a legal business here. Everything we do is above board, following regulations for Health Canada, but it's just, you know, Facebook, Instagram, do whatever they want, man. You know? 
Damn, yeah. big enough. I gotta call Mark for you. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, I'll let him know. Move, that'd be dope. I'll let him know. I'll let him know. <laughs> get him on the line if you can, man. <laughs> we can't reach. We can't get a hold of anyone over there. <laughs> <laughs> yo, it's like no one works there. Sometimes I wonder, does any, anyone even work at those hospitals? <laughs> yo, they don't have a customer <laughs> service thing. Yeah, yeah, impossible. Yeah, they can't contact them. Impossible. And if you do, they'll contact, never bro. hit you back, yeah. man. Yeah, especially if you say the word. You were supposed to find this. Yeah, man. Bro, if you say the word cannabis, they just block your number and stop talking to you. It's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. One day it'll change, though, yo. But you guys got it back up and running though, right? Hell yeah, yeah we gotta keep going, yo. Keep appealing. You can get your account back if it gets taken down sometimes, so, you know. Is that, is that the secret? Just appeal like crazy? Till you keep appealing, it? bro. Yeah, I mean, you know, things sure. happen. We've lost several accounts. Like, it doesn't always work, but, you know, I would tell people not to give up if their account gets deleted once. Okay, well, y'all hear that? <laughs> Anyone get deleted, just appeal the fuck out of it. Be annoying until... I feel like that's how you gotta be with life, bro. Like, be annoying, like... Keep going at it until it breaks, like until it cracks. Finally, you know? so then I walk up with the girls, man. You don't want to be uh, no. Listen, if you become annoying with the girls, then they just fucking walk away from you. You know, what I'm saying? it's over, bro. It's done. But I bet you, bro, there's that one guy who was annoying to the girl, and they're fully married and have a family right now. Maybe, man. I'm telling you right now. There's so many. That's what happened though. to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was your life story, man. <laughs> You're talking about yourself, man. Nah, yeah. Nah, I'm not about to get into my relationship on this one, bro. Because we'd be here for 10 hours, B. I don't know who do the annoying in the relationship anymore, man. You can tell us, man. Like, I'm yo, lost man. in the sun. Josh, he's blowing up my phone every day, man. <laughs> Stop doing it. Dude, do wouldn't leave I'm me alone. <laughs> bro, you know, we used to do this thing. We'd be at the video shoot, and she'd, she'd be blowing up my phone. So then when she when she asked, when I answer, I tell the boys to come around the phone, and they'll just start. <laughs> so, yeah, you need some tips? That's what you do. Come on, man. I have strategies. <laughs> I'm exposing myself. Your girl's gonna slap you in the head after this episode, man. Huh? Bro, I got <laughs> shit. Don't watch this part. <laughs> She's been making mad cameos lately on this series, bro. I'm talking about it too much, bro. Hell yeah, man. Um, shit, bro. Let's let's wrap this up with um. How do you guys want to be remembered? And what for? Just I'll let you answer that question. How do you guys want to answer that? How I want to be remembered, man. Mm -hmm. I just want to be remembered for changing the weed and snack game forever out here, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to be remembered for not giving up no matter what and just, you know, doing it my way, you know, really changing the culture and doing legendary things out here. Yeah. Just being a good person too, you know, giving back and uh, just doing good things for good pe people, you know, making people smile, made a lot of people laugh. That's what truly makes me happy. It's happier than anything is just giving back, you know. Hopefully I can be remembered one day for having a huge charity that, you know, did a lot of legendary things for people. So that's another thing we're focused on this year is getting the Snacky Chan Foundation popping because yeah. we want to do a lot of good things in my bro's name, you know? So okay. that's what all I, I want to be remembered, man. You know? Some blessing, man. Oh. Honestly, y'all, I, like, I want to change the weed game. I think we are changing the weed game in Canada, maybe even more than just Canada. It's mm -hmm. a big thing for me, obviously, bro. It's, my passion is cannabis. Uh, past that, I just want to be remembered by the, the people around me as someone they could trust, you know, someone, a loyal person and uh, someone who was there and, you know, got shit done. So, yeah. Just being a good person, <laughs> you know? For real. So I think that's so, like, underrated nowadays, you know? It's not spoken about enough. Just being a good person, just being good energy. Oh, Any yeah. room you're in, you're always uplifting others oh, yeah, and shit, man. you know? I think that's not spoken about enough. I want to be remembered years. for never folding no matter what. Yes, you know, sir. no matter what came in my way. Always oh kept God, it moving, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Always kept it going, you know? That's huge for me. I think yeah, a, a big part of anyone's legacy too is, is the stuff that the people close to them say, bro. Like, I think that if the people close to you are, are singing your praises, like you're really doing the right thing. You know, like you can put on it whatever image you want for social and stuff, but like, you know, Spencer, the reason Spencer's like got such a solid team around him is because like he's really like that behind the, behind the scenes. And I think yeah, that's it's, a, it's like that thing they say, it's like what they say behind when, they, when they're not in front of you. Exactly. That's a real shit that, that's how you really truly impacted that person. For sure. How they speak about you when you're not there, right? Oh yeah, man, just, just keep inspiring people, you know, like, yeah. that's what keeps me going right now, man. The baby and just keep inspiring people, you know? Yeah. Some, like, some days when I began these messages, like, a kid across the across the world who's like impacted from our story. I don't believe this shit, you know? Yeah, right. And that's what keeps me going, gives me energy. Keep going and not give up no matter what, because 
Some days I, some days I did feel like giving up. You know, I was this close, but you know, thank God we're still here, keeping it, keeping yeah. it going. You know? Changing the city, bro. Hell yeah, man. I think, I think our, that's the thing I'm really proud of over our city is like we're really bringing the culture together. Like we're starting to really all, come together. All avenues are coming, connecting, you know, in a sense. So it's, it's dope to see and it's dope to be a part of. Oh yeah, man, that's the best city in the world. Yeah, that's absolutely. so true, bro. I can't believe sometimes, like, I used to not think that. I used to think, like, you know, I'm going to move here, I'm going to move there. Because those were the things that were shown to us. But it's like, now it's time to, like, people actually talk about Vancouver and pe want people to come here type shit, you know? Man, some, as someone who's only been here for, like, less than a year or two, it's crazy, bro. I didn't understand, like, the scene that's here with just <laughs> artists, like, even, like, the barber scene, like, cannabis and everything, bro. There's something really special brewing here. And I think, like, yeah. Vancouver is that is that next town to blow up for, for a lot of that's up to hear that's up to hear yeah that's, that's awesome yo. yeah for a while we were just known like there was, there was a but the barber community was one of the first communities that I actually saw like really come together and one of the like, oldest ones too. try to do things yeah. you know it's cool to see you guys like support each other like all the different stops and everything that has been cool but we realized it's just like that's what you got to do yeah. Yeah. If there's any way we're gonna get the fuck out of here or like yeah. really get Vancouver to that spot is just supporting each other. Support each other for real. Otherwise we're fucked. Yeah. We're just gonna keep dragging each other down. You know what too man, and that's another tip to being successful, just showing love to other people, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like when you're successful and you show love to other people, it just brings more blessings to you, you know? Mm -hmm. And don't let those blessings get to your head too. No, for sure. Don't get lost in the sauce. Don't get Stay lost in the sauce. Always. Yeah, bro. Um, what can we expect next from you guys? What should we look out for? What should we be looking out for? Look out for the new store, new Denmark coming soon. Lobson, baby. There might be a new THC, hopefully we're going to announce pretty soon here Whoop. too, you know? The exclusive. Just look out for, just look out for us. Keep doing legendary things and keep elevating the culture out here in Vancouver, man. Fuck yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? And we're just getting started. We're just getting started, man. <laughs> no, no, that's crazy. Cap. No oh snack God. cap. Well, we got fucking... Um, so many quotes to like yeah. come off of this fucking yeah. interview, bro. You know, man. I, <laughs> I send you a new quote every day. Every to make day. A logo for I'm saying, like, yo, we could have, bro, we could literally take like 50 excerpts from this thing literally. and post it as a new uh, as a new quote, bro. Oh, yeah, man. Call it like a uh, motivation Monday or some shit. Straight up, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Well, yo, it was a pleasure having you guys and yeah, fuck. Thank you so much. You guys inspire us yeah, uh, nice. with everything that we do. Um, you guys inspire time. the whole city. I'm sure you guys already know that, but you guys truly do. And uh, we're just rooting for you guys, bro. Thank you, bro. We wish you guys nothing but success. Like like Steve always says, success is nothing less. So, you know, success we're Success is nothing less. I like that, man. Yeah, man. Uh, you take that shit. You see it on Instagram. <laughs> yo, you trademarked that, yeah? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> He's going to make a yo, call. Hold on. Yo, yo. I got to call my lawyer. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> success, nothing less. Yo, <laughs> oh, You're gonna see that on the, on the wall up there. Yeah? <laughs> success, he's gonna make me make the graphic. Yo, put it, put it up. Yo, but I appreciate you guys, and man, I just wanna give you guys a shout out back, man. I see you guys doing your thing, man. You guys are working hard, man. You guys putting out a new video every other week, man. You know, it's only a matter of time for this shit really blows the fuck up for you guys. Thank you, bro. You know, so just Real keep staying man. consistent. And you guys got a good team here, you know? Like, Kinda. I can just sense some real loyalty here, man. That's the main thing, you know? So, yeah, just yeah, keep sure. doing what you guys do. Real shit, bro. Appreciate you, Appreciate y'all, bro. Love, fam. Love. Hey! <laughs> Rocking the action. Yo, ever since he calmed that shit, it's been his favorite shit. He hasn't taken this <laughs> off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, had <to> take it. <laughs> I, I had to fucking rip it off his head and take it to the dry cleaner the other day. I'm like, yo, you need to wash this shit, man. Wash this shit, man. Right? It's getting musty in here. Yeah. <laughs> no stains. Just need to peel it a little bit. But there is a little bit. Yeah. yeah. We, can, we can fix that. That's, yeah. that's, that's the, the authentic side when it starts to peel. Yeah, yeah. And it's like we'll have like three of them, bro. <laughs> vintage, baby. Let's get it, yo. Thank y'all for tuning in to our season finale. It was one of the most realist conversations we had with our brothers over here. So thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, season three in the talks right now, and we hope you guys stay loving, stay true, and stay inspiring. Thank Let's you. get straight to it. Let's get straight to it. Success is nothing less.